Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 4, Part 3. Welcome to Part 3. In this part, we are going to focus on the hidden layer. The hidden layer is any layer or layers that occur in between the input and output layers of a neural network. The hidden layer is somewhat mysterious because you can change it. Usually the amount of neurons that you have in the input or output layer is well defined by the sort of data that you're either inputting or what you expect from the output. But how many neurons do you put into the hidden layers and how many hidden layers do you have? Often this falls down to trial and error, but we will look at some general rules of thumb that you can use to determine how many neurons to put in these layers and also how many layers to use. For cases where it does fall down to trial and error, we will look later at this course at a process called pruning. Pruning is where you remove neurons from the hidden layers to see how, the, how it affects the error rate of the neural network. This allows you to remove unnecessary neurons. You can't remove unnecessary neurons from the input or output layers because they define the, the data that the neural network is being trained on and the expected output. To remove neurons from the input and output layers changes the very nature of the problem. We will begin by examining what exactly a hidden layer is. Here you see the hidden layer of this speed-forward neural network. The hidden layer can be changed without affecting the actual parameters of the problem. The problem that you're trying to solve has its input specified by the number of input neurons and its output specified by the number of output neurons. If you change the input or the output, you are changing the classification of the type of problem that you're trying to solve and you're going to have to pretty much start from scratch in terms of training. However, you can change the hidden layers and not change the, the nature of the problem. The hidden layers are really how you optimize the neural network for your particular problem. Once you've defined the problem, the next step is defining how many hidden layers you need and how many neurons should exist in each of these hidden layers. This is what we discuss in this part. First, let's look at what type of problems you can solve with a zero, one, or two hidden layer neural network. If you have no hidden layers, zero, this is a very simple sort of neural network. It cannot represent anything that is not linear separable. This is, for example, the XOR problem is even too complicated for this sort of neural network. Neural networks that have one or two hidden layers can take on increasingly more complex problems. More than two hidden layers is fairly rare and you won't often see that sort of a neural network. Further, that type of a neural network would take a considerably long time to train using backpropagation or other sorts of training algorithms. Often you will find yourself simply experimenting to find the number of layers you need. You must also consider the number of neurons that you're going to have in your hidden layer. There's some rule of thumbs that can be useful here. The number of hidden neurons should be between the size of the input layer and the size of the output layer. Another rule of thumb is the number of hidden neurons should be two-thirds the size of the input layer plus the size of the output layer. Finally, another rule of thumb is the number of hidden neurons should be less than twice the size of the input layer. While these rules of thumb may be useful to give you a starting point, when I train neural networks, I often find that it's sort of a trial and error sort of approach to see how many um, of these layers and neurons I actually need. You can also use pruning techniques that we will learn about later in this course. Pruning allows you to start with a larger number and then prune it back, removing unneeded neurons and layers. This concludes part three. In part four, you're going to learn about the feed forward process. We're going to see exactly how the outputs from a feed forward neural network is actually calculated. We hope you will continue with part four. Thank you. 
This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.